Okay, welcome back everybody, um, and let's get started modeling this uh, lava lamp shape. So the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, since it's always a good idea if you're uh, new to modeling, is to model uh, to a reference image. I'm actually going to bring in a reference image of that uh, lava lamp, this guy right here, and we're going to build the model so that it matches this shape a little bit better than the one that I sort of eyeballed earlier. Uh, this is a very simple shape. It would be easy enough to just just do it by eye, uh, but for complete list, let me uh, actually bring in a, uh, a reference plane and a reference image, and we'll work with that. So there's multiple ways that you can bring in reference images. One way is you can attach an image directly to the camera. Uh, I just don't like doing that method, so I'm not going to bother with it, because moving the image up and down and back and forth means playing with camera settings, and I just don't like doing that for, for that same reason. I think I have a little bit more control when I attach a reference image to an actual physical geometry. So we're going to start by creating a plane. And I'm just going to quickly draw it out. I'm going to hit the 5 key to go into shaded view. And I'm going to press the 6 key actually to go in shaded and textured view. Since there's no texture on this yet, nothing changes when you press the 6 key. I'm going to go to the channel box. You can get to the channel box with these buttons up here. Right, this brings up the attribute editor. This one is the tool settings, and the one farthest to the right is the channel box. Okay, I just like to have them all clicked, and I can get to them by just switching on these tabs. All right, so I'm going to uh, take this guy. I'm going to take its settings in the channel box and just center it at zero. Now the thing to remember is it's important to have the aspect ratio of this plane the same as the aspect ratio of your pic of your image and the easiest way to do that is go to whatever your image viewing program is and you can see here that this is nine inches by twenty four inches so all I need is nine units by twenty four and everything will be nicely lined up so I'm just going to come in here and type nine and 24. Doesn't matter what the units are, just 9 by 24. And you can see that's kind of the wrong way. I'd, I want it to be the other way if this is the right view. So I'm going to switch this around and make it uh, I'm just thinking here. Uh, well, it is width and height. So let's yeah, no, let's do that. Let's make it 24 and make this 9. Sorry. Really doesn't matter. You just have to do some rotations if you had it the other way. But that's the right aspect ratio. So now if I click this guy, right, it's selected. Let's go to the hypershade. So you click on your hypershade. To get to hypershade, that's actually under Windows. Uh, uh, where's that? Windows. General editors, no rendering editors. Yeah, uh, general editor. It's under rendering editors hypershade. Okay, and once again, I have it on my hot bar. So if I if I seem to hem and haw looking for things up here in the menus, it's because uh, after years of using things from the uh, my custom uh, shelf, I've forgotten where they are up here in the. Uh, <laughs> I have to search for them to figure out where they're at again. But anyway, I've got it on a hot on a custom shelf that I've created here and so we'll go to that hypershade uh, I have a dual monitor so let me uh, uh, shrink this window down and pull it over here so this is the hypershade let's go to Maya and let's create a new Lambert by just clicking on Lambert All right uh, new Lambert and that creates a Lambert over here Lambert 2 uh, it's always a good idea if you double click on it, come to its settings here and change it to, uh, I don't know, rough. Okay, give it a name. And then in the color attribute, come over and click on this checker box here, click on file, search for the image, which is lava lamp, say open, and now you've got a material with the image on it. Now the last thing to do is just apply this image to our uh, to our poly plane and to do that you click the polyplane and then over here you uh, right click on the uh, material that has that image now applied to its color and we uh, drag up 
and select assigned to selected. And if I come over here, you see it gets assigned to the uh, selected material. And you can see that it, it actually did, that's why I was hemming and hawing here. Let me pick this guy and put it back the way it should be. The width is 9 and the height is 24. 24. Okay, so now it's the right aspect ratio and it's in the right direction. Uh, the problem is that it's not lined up properly and this usually gets a lot of people confused. It, it did me for a long time. If you come down here in the uh, in the polyplane creation node, down here is create U UVs, normalize. Open this and select uh, normalization off and all of a sudden everything will pop onto the plane and be oriented correctly. So that's all we have to do. Okay. So now the problem is I want it to be, I like to model from the right. So I'm going to hit the E key to go rotation. I'm going to rotate this a little bit. I'm going to come up here and rotate it 90. And then I'm going to take the X rotation handle. I'm going to rotate it down. And I'm going to come over here and make that 90. Right. And then from the side view, I'm going to take the whole thing hitting the W key. I'm going to pull it up so it's sort of sitting on the axis. Now there's some perspective here. We're you know kind of seeing this and we're getting some perspective from the camera. So I'm going to say that the basic shape is, you know, we're not going to count this rounded part here because we're looking straight at it orthogonally. So I'm going to put it right there and you can see it's in the middle of the axis. So that's good. And it's sitting on top of the of our grid right now. So there we go. Now the only other thing we could do if we wanted to was actually scale it to the proper size but I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. So there we go. We got our image plane set up and we're ready to start modeling.